Obama phones it in at the debate. They have to cover for that by asking what went wrong. He's the smartest guy in the world. What happened? And they make up all the phony excuses. And then as, as a means of trying to reclaim lost ground, they run a big bird ad. And to top it off, there was a tweet. This is, this is I, th- I thought this was a joke when I saw this. Just now. I, I, I ran this down to make sure this actually was said, and it was. There's a White House or campaign press secretary by the name of, uh, I think, Jennifer, Jen Psaki. And when the hubbub over the Big Bird ad hit yesterday, you know what she said? President Obama is the only candidate in this race who is going to continue to fight for Big Bird and Elmo. In the midst of all of this, in the aftermath of Obama's dismal debate performance, the media turning on them, the Big Bird ad, that's chump change, it's small stuff, I can't believe that they're, they're turning on him on that, and they're having a problem with this State Department business. Anything they can't save him from is a problem. Anything they can't cover up themselves is a problem. So if they can't do the cover-up, then it's left to Obama to do it. And I tell you, these people are a bunch of amateurs. Because now they want to say that Susan Rice wasn't lying. She got bad intel. Well, the State Department, just to walk you through it again, State Department is part of the intel community. They get briefed, along with all the National Security Council people and all this, CIA, yeah, they, they they have their Bureau of Intelligence and Research. That's their their intel unit. And they're saying publicly there was no intel suggesting the video had rankled emotions in Benghazi. And they didn't ever say so. So Gibbs has to be lying when he says that Susan Rice wasn't lying. She had bad intel. The State Department says we didn't have any intel like that. We didn't put that intel out. Gibbs says she got it from the State Department. State Department... Doesn't want to lie because they're going up under oath this afternoon before a congressional committee. So there, there was no intel that made this absurd movie claim. The White House made it up, folks. The White House made it up, and then they gave it out as marching orders to Susan Rice and to Jay Carney, who again hasn't been seen in a couple weeks. Hillary Clinton. I run the ad in Pakistan. Got the audio from that coming up just to remind you. There was no intel that made this absurd movie claim. So Gibbs is lying about that. White House made it up. So, see, Obama had a choice. Blame the movie or blame the utter failure of his policy in Libya, and he decided to blame the movie. Because what we have here is an utter failure in Obama foreign policy in Libya. And you know what it's based in? It's based on pure liberalism, based on the phony concepts of liberalism, which states... If you make friends with bad guys, the bad guys will love you. Obama, we got rid of Gaddafi. Libya hated Gaddafi. Ergo, Libyans love Obama. Not the case. Not everybody in Libya hated Gaddafi. But certainly not everybody in Libya loves Obama. Probably quite the opposite. So Obama assuming, like he assumes here, that everybody loves him. And everybody is in awe of him. The one. So he rolls the dice. The Libyans love him. They won't do anything. The Libyans behave. The Al-Qaeda behaves as Al-Qaeda will. Snake's a snake. Scorpion's a scorpion. You've heard the story. And we have another breakdown in foreign policy. And Obama can't say, you know what? My policy was really bad, and I blew it. And I'll get better. No, nope. blame it on an American citizen and nothing to do with it. The maker of an obscure, wacko amateurish video, make sure the guy gets arrested, apologize all over the world for it, and it all unravels because the State Department won't fall on the sword for the one. Back to the audio sound bites. This is President Obama at the United Nations, September 25th. The future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. It's time to heed the words of Gandhi. Intolerance is itself a form of violence and an obstacle to the growth of a true democratic spirit. The future does not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam carrying on this lie, this cover-up, that all of this slander of the prophet of Islam led to the death of our ambassador. Here's more. In 2012, at a time when anyone with a cell phone can spread offensive views around the world with a click of a button, the notion that we can control the flow of information is obsolete. This is pathetic. This is a speech before the United Nations General Assembly. And it continues this mirage, this myth that a filmmaker 
is responsible for the death of an ambassador. This is this is profoundly embarrassing. We are surrounded by incompetence, lie. I I I don't know what, but it's it's embarrassing. Here's the ad. We were attacked on 9-11. State Department, again, just to reiterate, there was no protest that did not spontaneously erupt. It was a pre-planned terror attack. We never had any intels that a video had anything to do with this. And yet, this nation, President of the United States, Hillary Clinton, voice a television ad broadcast in the Muslim world in Pakistan, apologizing for the video. Since our founding... The United States has been a nation that respects all faiths. We reject all efforts to denigrate the religious beliefs of others. But there is absolutely no justification to this type of senseless violence. None. Let me state very clearly, and I hope it is obvious, that the United States government had absolutely nothing to do with this video. We absolutely reject its content and message. America's commitment to religious tolerance goes back to the very beginning of our nation. What does she think? Everybody in the audience is five years old or something, or the way she's speaking? But anyway, this is a coordinated lie continuing to be told, planned and executed by the administration to cover up for an absolute failure of American foreign policy. Failure of Obama foreign policy. So he brings Hillary in and they discuss how to do this and they corrupt everybody. Well, I think this bunch is corrupt before they got there. Jay Carney, Susan Rice, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and any number of other Democrats who joined the chorus that it was the video. Folks, I'm making a big deal out of this because this is a huge deal. The State Department, I can't believe this has happened. The State Department throwing Obama under the bus. There was no video. We didn't say it was a video. We had no intel blaming the video. There was no protest. They, they, State Department say everything that the administration has told you, we didn't tell them. They made it up. We have to assume that. Here's Susan Rice, by the way. She was all over the Sunday shows on September 16th. This is Meet the Press, David Gregory, and a question you talked about this as spontaneous. Can you say definitively that the attacks on our consulate in Libya that killed Ambassador Stevens and others was spontaneous? Was it a planned attack? Was there a terrorist element to it? What happened in Benghazi was, in fact, initially a spontaneous uh, reaction to what had just transpired hours before in Cairo, uh, almost a copycat uh, of, of the demonstrations against our facility in Cairo, uh, which were prompted, of course, by the video. Oh, of course. Oh, of course, prompted by the video. And Robert Gibbs saying today that, well, yeah, she wasn't really lying. She just got bad intel in the State Department. Again, the State Department has their own, they're, they're part of the intel community. They've got their own intel division. They say, we didn't have such intel. Folks, I mean, they're literally just making this up. I want you to hear this montage again of all top-level regime figures spreading the lie that's now been exposed. I don't care how offensive this video was, and it was terribly offensive, and we should shun it. This video is disgusting and reprehensible. It appears to have a deeply cynical purpose to denigrate a great religion and to provoke rage. Let's be clear. These protests were in reaction to a video that had spread to the region. You had a video that was released by somebody who lives here, sort of a shadowy character, who is an extremely offensive video. The unrest we've seen has been in reaction to a video. It was a crude and disgusting video, sparked outrage throughout the Muslim world. It was a spontaneous, not a premeditated response, a direct result of a heinous and offensive video. I know there are some who ask, why don't we just ban such a video? And the answer is enshrined in our laws. Our Constitution protects the right to practice free speech. If they will lie to us this brazenly, this blatantly, in the face of contradictory evidence, what else will they lie about? What else have they been lying about? Ponder that as we take another holy prophet timeout. The State Department Intelligence Division 
They have their own intelligence division. Just like uh, the DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency. The, the State Department has their own. And you would assume that it reports to the White House like they all, uh, all the others do. The CIA reports. That's when Obama cares, by the way, about getting a briefing. But his national security director is a guy named Clapper. She would assume that the State Department's intelligence agency is reporting to Clapper at the White House. The BIR has to report someplace. It probably is a James Clapper, who's a director of national intelligence. And in fact, Clapper and Hillary had a private meeting with congressmen and told them that what happened in Libya was not premeditated. It was spontaneous. It was brought on by the video. September 20th, 2012, from the Hill.com, Clinton fails to convince Republicans on administration's account of Libya attack. Republican lawmakers left a closed-door briefing with Secretary Hillary Clinton and other officials on Thursday, still unconvinced by the regime's assessment that last week's attack that killed four Americans in Libya was not a premeditated attack of terrorism. Bill Flores, a Republican from Texas, told Hill when he left the House briefing with Clinton that trying to cover their behinds. What they were, they were lying to members of Congress. Now, the hearings are underway. If this were a Republican administration had done this, these hearings would be on every television network. And there would be a demand to get to the bottom of this. An American ambassador is dead. Now, I don't know what you call it a failure of foreign policy or a refusal to acknowledge repeated warnings. I don't care what it's called. We have glaring incompetence. And the reason for it is political. The reason Obama sent, I'm sure it was Obama, who sent word out to ignore all these terrorist warnings is there aren't any terrorists left. He killed Osama. Do not discount this, folks. Do, do, not, do not allow yourselves to not appreciate the importance of this. Killing Osama bin Laden carried with it the notion that Obama had wiped out al-Qaeda as well. We'd cut the head off. Why, without the head, there's no, there's no body. And so the whole notion was that our brave young president, the first black president who was supposedly a military pacifist, look at this guy, he's tougher than Bush, he's tougher than anybody. When the time came, he took out Osama, and with it, all of al-Qaeda. Well, if that's your storyline, then al-Qaeda can't be responsible for any terrorist activity in Middle East. In, in Cairo or in Benghazi. So that's why you lie about it. That's why you ignore it. And you roll the dice that they're not going to do anything. And then you roll the dice that they do do something, and media will cover for you. Because they always do.